my name is Erin Richardson, and this is my MFA thesis exhibition at Cal State Long Beach. It consists of mixed media etchings and a sculpture made out of paraffin and soy wax. My name is Tina Linville, and this is my MFA show, also at Cal State Long Beach, obviously. Um, I make sculpture out of objects that I accumulate in my studio and amass and wrap and revise. Yeah. And so how much of this amalgam was done in advance and how much was uh, created on site? Um, it's made out of my sculptures. So I'm, I make uh, individual objects and then I bring them all in here and then make them, I use them as almost an object and they become something new in the space. This is a, a, a sort of a site-specific installation yes. of objects you've created beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Erin, as a printmaker, of course, you were done way in advance and had to do no <laughs> at all. Oh, gosh, no. Um, my, my process is pretty labor intensive. I do etchings that I print on mulberry paper that I then wax with beeswax to make them transparent. And then I hand sew them onto larger paper that I dye with a fiber reactive dye. So I was, I was working up until right before the installation. The big piece took about 20 hours to sew down and it was the last piece that I made right like the week of the show. I really wanted it to go in and I was polishing the ends of the antlers as I was installing them so I was I was working right up until installation so you're both totally sleep deprived yes. yeah <laughs> yeah and so you both actually have sewing right but very different kind of sewing in these pieces yeah um, I it actually comes up in it's a lot with me where people will tell me that I should try to hand sew my pieces like Tina does. And, and then people I, tell me I should try sewing it neater and more carefully like Erin does. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. Guys, I never knew that people said that. People to say you. that. To okay. Me. I feel better now. More than one time. Okay. Several times. Wow. Yeah. So I then have to tell people that I actually do hand sew my pieces. <laughs> I just. Um, they just look different than the way Tina does it. And I was actually really envious watching Tina sew when I was watching her install because it was just this like really like aggressive kind of gesture that I could never do in my pieces. Like when I sew aggressively, it doesn't look good at all. It looks sloppy and your sewing looks really nice. So I'm very envious of your <laughs> aggressive sewing. I could never sew like you. Oh, thank you. I would, I would die first. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I've tried. I have tried to be more. Maybe, Maybe we'll do a like collaborative piece someday. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's let it out. Yeah. I think it's also just different too because you're like pulling pieces together. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a structural thing, and mine is. They're, they're flat when I make them, and I have to lift them up and mm, yeah. kind of, it's like a dance when I do mine. Well, I, I guess Tina's would be like a dance too, it's just maybe a different yeah, dance. Yeah, different kind of yeah. dance. <laughs> and what's next for you guys? You're just relaxed at this point, or I mean, are you finishing up MFA degrees, or will you yeah. be? Yeah. Leaving this university in May? Yes, we are gonna, I'm gonna be, and so is Tina, leaving this university, starting our art careers. Um, I'm really looking forward to kind of continuing working and answering some questions that kind of came up in this body of work, and then also just making work and not being afraid to fail, because Pretty much since the semester started, I've had to make work and then had to be good. And I'm kind of looking forward to making work and just getting stuff out of me and making stuff because I want to make it again. And it being okay to fail, being okay to make pieces that aren't so good again. Because then that's when the really good stuff starts to happen again. Yeah, I'm looking forward to making without 
having to explain it away to the point where it loses something. Yeah. Not that I do a lot of that, but I, I do feel pressure to have to say it, and I, the work says it already. I don't know. I'm excited to just do what I need to do and not have to submit. <laughs> when I came up, you were both knitting, and, and you said that you you liked being able to create something that, that didn't have to pass a standard or okay. be discussed, yeah. that, that you could just be creating sort of in a free flow kind of way? Yeah. yeah. It, it was, we were having a little knitting party outside the gallery, and it was, it's kind of fun because it's a process and it's these beautiful fibers that you're using to make this beautiful thing, but it's not like you have to defend it conceptually, mm -hmm. research it. I mean, some people do, of course. Some people use yeah, knitting definitely. in their art, making installation and sculpture, conceptual pieces, but you're just making a scarf. You don't have to. Yeah. I'm just making a scarf. Uh, we're just making scarves. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so excited to just make a scarf. Yeah. And not have to defend it and critique yeah. your classmates. And, and my other big surprise was these two shows, the way they almost organically flow one into the other. I assume that the whole two artist show was designed this way and actually a coincidence and you just, it, it just clicked. Yeah, um, we both work with objects, but in a very different way. Tina uses the physical object. I kind of reinterpret the object through drawing or um, replicas. I make replicas and Tina covers her objects, so I think we both have a similar starting place mm -hmm. in our process, but a very different um, divergence from that starting place. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Tina uses more color than I do. Yeah, yes, there's a little color <laughs> uh, differentiation. Yeah. Well, congratulations on two beautiful installations, uh, or two that make one, I guess. All right, thank you. Thank you.